Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Just out here checking out the gorgeous electric lime Toyota Tacoma. It is a TRD off-road, by the way. I know, the badging is gone, you can't tell, but that doesn't matter to me. I know what it is. Anyway, I got a, a notification this morning, um, some more information on the new Toyota Tacoma that's coming, the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. And at first, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, this is cool because they're still offering the manual transmission, which I can't believe they're doing. You know, I predicted that it would be gone. I admit it, I was wrong. They are still going to have a manual transmission for the 2024 Tacoma. But this little blurb that I got this morning was a little bit disheartening for me because I've had a couple of the the options, the features that this new manual is going to have. And when I say new manual, I really hope that Toyota is indeed putting in a new manual transmission. You know, I had a manual on my 2020. It felt like it was 100 years old. It was clunky. It was notchy. First was in the wrong spot. That'll be interesting to see if they actually put first and or reverse, I should say, was in the wrong spot. It'll be interesting to see if they put reverse where it should be over to the right and down, not up to the left and over. You know, anyway, just a little pet peeve of mine. Yeah, you get used to it, sort of. I never really did. But it was just a horrible manual transmission. So I hope they go with a whole renewed, redesigned manual transmission. Anyway, the couple of features that I'm talking about. Number one, automatic rev matching. Rev matching is a horrible thing. You know, I had it in a Civic Type R a while back, and it's something that wasn't just disliked by me. There were many enthusiasts out there who did not like rev matching. If you're not familiar with rev matching, it's like when you go to shift, the car maintains its RPM level. In other words, it doesn't drop down quickly, automatically, when you engage the clutch. You push the clutch down, the RPMs drop, you're supposed to give it a little bit of gas. This is normally. Give it a little bit of gas once you engage, and this all happens simultaneously pretty quickly if you're not familiar with the manual. But you go to shift, you let the clutch up, you give it gas. It's kind of like a, a same time motion, if you will, to bring the revs back up so that you can smoothly get into the next gear. Now, what rev matching does is it tries to automatically create that scenario, if you will, so that when you push the clutch in, the, the RPMs don't automatically drop. They can even go higher. And it's a really weird feeling if you're used to driving a manual the way that, in my opinion, it should be driven. It's very strange that when you hit the clutch, you don't feel the car kind of go down a little bit when it comes to RPMs. It can also make for a rather rough transition if you're not used to it, you have to kind of relearn that little friction engagement point and the revs in the engine when it does it for you automatically. I guess they're probably doing it for people who aren't real familiar with manual transmissions. Maybe they're trying to bring new manual drivers into the fold. Maybe the people who are teetering, you know, the enthusiasts out there who want a manual but don't really know how to drive one. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of as to why they've added automatic rev matching. Just not a good thing in my opinion. Next up, anti-stall technology or anti-stall technology. That to me probably goes right along with the automatic rev matching. In other words, they've made it more forgiving. If you've never driven a manual or if you have, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't get that little synchronic synchronous, at the same time motion correct, you can stall the car, you know, from a stop or even if you shift at a low speed and you're going too slowly. Let's say you go from first to second and you're really not going fast enough to go into second. And I think that's a, a big mistake that a lot of first time manual drivers make. You know, they're all concerned, you gotta shift. If you don't shift, it's gonna stall. So they get in a hurry. They get in a hurry to go from first to second, and they're not really going fast enough. It's what I've noticed when I've taught other people how to drive manuals. They just want to shift into that second gear too quickly. I don't know. I don't like this. I'm more of a purist, I guess, when it comes to manual transmissions. 
I want it to be like it's always been. I just want a smoother transmission in the Toyota Tacoma. You know, I've said all along that the best manual that there is out there is the Honda manual. I have a six-speed manual in this Honda. It's a Civic. And I have to say, every time I get into a different Honda, I've had this one now for a few months, but every time I get into a different Honda, it's always refreshing how good the manual transmission is. And it brings back bad memories about how bad the Toyota Tacoma transmission was. And I've got to believe in some of the other cars that they've had, uh, maybe they've upgraded the manuals in those. I certainly hope that when they did have manuals in their other vehicles that they didn't utilize the old transmissions. I couldn't imagine that they did, that they didn't update things so that it was smoother. It just seems to me like in the Tacoma, they kind of took that, it's a truck, who cares stance. Well, there are people out there who care, like me. You know, when I first got into that Tacoma, I was disheartened right away. I thought, gee, certainly, and this is part of the reason I went ahead and got a manual. I thought it would be more updated and it would be smoother, that it wouldn't be like they were back when I first learned how to drive a manual in a Plymouth K car. That thing was horrible. If you want to learn, if you can find one, how to drive a manual and be able to drive one forever, learn how to drive on an old Plymouth K car. I doubt you can find them anymore. I'm sure they're all DED now, sitting in junkyards, probably falling apart, maybe completely disintegrated. I don't know. But anyway, these are just a couple of things I think that maybe Toyota is going a little bit sideways with the manual. And maybe they're going to keep the same manual and just add some technology, you know, some computer programming in there to keep the revs up so that they can maintain that original manual transmission without having to put the engineering work. I mean, they have manuals. Everybody did. Uh, they could just pull them off the shelf. But maybe they're just trying to stretch out the longevity of the current manuals that they have. Who knows? Maybe they even have a bunch of manual transmissions sitting around and they don't want to waste them. They're sitting on the shelves rotting and they want to pull them out so they can at least get rid of inventory and then go ahead and cut the manual off altogether. It's going to be interesting to me to see how sales go with the manual. You know, right now, somewhere between four and 6%, I'm sure that number has dropped, four and 6% of the vehicles sold are manual transmissions. That's not very many. And I'm guessing it's probably more like 3% now, only because a lot of the manufacturers have discontinued manuals. You can't even get them in sports cars anymore. You get those fake faux shifter things, paddles, paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Or maybe even you have it in your shifter in the center console there. You know, you can put it in sport mode and shift through the gears. Of course, it won't let you blow up the engine or anything, which I guess is good but it's not real manual driving if you don't have a clutch and you can't stall the car. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here and talk about that a bit. First, I saw this announcement. I was encouraged, and then I saw these nanny features, and I thought they are really dumbing down their manual transmission. Leave a comment. Let me know. Would you get one that has this kind of stuff in it? Automatic rev matching, anti-stall technology? I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.